Hey guys, what's up? This is Casey. Hey, this is Coach Tom. Yeah, this is Shot Science Overtime number 182. <laughs> Blows me away. <laughs> <laughs> Obligatory. Okay, so this is our live show. This is one of the uh, one of our weekly attempts to talk with you guys, meet with you guys, and try to answer your questions that you have on basketball-related right. stuff. Um, Nay says, hi, what's up? It's great to see you here. Uh, All right. So... This is not a tutorial video or a short video, in, in fact. So if that's what you want to see, go to our video library. We got hundreds of those in there. Yeah. And uh, if you want to ch chill with us for a little while and ask some questions, have a little chat about basketball, that would be cool. The Flipsies. Hey, is there any way to rewatch this? Yes. yes. Uh, this goes up on our channel after it's done, and you can watch it uh, when we're done, yeah. whenever it's convenient. Emmanuel says, sup, Oli. All right. Says, hey, three times Big J says, hi. Peter Bragiel says, hey, Casey and Coach Tom, what's right. up? That's my buddy Pete. All right, Remember Peter, Pete? how are you? Pete Wave, hashtag Pete Wave. Marco <laughs> Gonzalez says, hey. So if you guys want to chill with us for the next hour or so and talk about basketball, awesome. If you don't, you can get out right now, and it will not hurt our feelings. But we'd love to have you here. Make sure you guys are sending us in your questions on anything basketball related. Um, but we're going to have a topic that we discuss at the top of the show here that we think is something that is – Maybe going to cut out a little bit of the learning curve for you, help you maybe reach your potential a little bit earlier if, right. if uh, that's possible. Um, but uh, while we're doing that, you guys are sending us anything related to basketball that you want to talk about. Any question you want to ask a coach or talk about in terms of developing yourself as a player, send those to us. Anything basketball related, shooting, passing, dribbling, defense, how to talk to your coach, free throws, defense yeah. maybe i said that twice but whatever hey let's um, get the flipsy before he leaves oh uh, the flipsy says okay cool i have finals week wish i could stay but i'll leave a like awesome man thank you and good luck uh how often do we do these we do them mostly every sunday right sometimes we miss a few when we have things going on but we try to be here as often as we possibly can but good luck on your finals um let's see where was i uh, um, don't know oh so we were just introducing the the format so yeah. While we're doing this talk, please send us your, your questions. Also, we want to tell you guys to check out all of our social media stuff. We are Shot Science on everything. So if you go to Instagram, you type in Shot Science, that's us. If you go to Twitter, we are at Shot Science. On Facebook, we are Shot Science there. And we would love to have you guys anywhere in that stuff yeah. talking to us about basketball stuff because we do different things in different places. Yeah. Um, also, go check out ShotScience.com. You can get all of our cool training gear, whether that's the, the vertical jump box where we help you uh, put, we put together all the best ingredients we think right. for training your vertical or athleticism right. into one box. Uh, you can get the Shot Science t-shirts. Yeah, so t-shirts. Yep. So if you guys want to get one of those and rep Shot Science, we would totally appreciate that. Anybody that goes on and, and buys a shirt and posts on social media that you're wearing the shirt or you're doing a workout in a shirt, hashtag Team Shot Science. We see those, and we like to feature people that, that wear this stuff. So um, that's, that's enough for business. I think we can, we can touch on that stuff later, but we uh, really appreciate you guys being here. So let's get into our topic for today, which is four essential skills to be a good basketball player. And we will preface this by saying that we think you should be great at all skills yeah. all things pertaining to basketball because that's the kind of basketball player that actually will be successful yeah. but we have a few kind of hard hitters that we think you guys should probably have somewhat of a focus on but still remember to work on everything so yeah. what are what are some of those essential skills well before we get going you know what would be really cool if uh, maybe those of you who are watching is list the four that you think and how they might rank for you uh, and then get back to us. So let us know. That makes it seem like we aren't prepared and we don't no, know. No, we're prepared. But the, the thing is, is that I like to know what other people are thinking about that. Yeah, you know? for sure. Okay, so the thing, let's see what you're thinking. Uh, give us the one through four. And your and, essentials, uh, your essential, essential skills for basketball. Yeah, yeah. and then we'll take and, and talk about them a little bit later. Okay, one of the things that is so important for us to, to realize is that basketball is a very, uh, um, f very much a finesse game, uh, meaning that the skills have to be very uh, tight uh, and effective. And what we, do, what we do, the approach we take is this, is that when we start teaching a new student how to play the game of basketball or one who's been playing and we want them to improve, we start off naturally with what? What do you think? Got to put the ball in the hole. So how do you got to put the ball in the hole? Otherwise, why play? And you know, oftentimes what we'll find is that players have really bad uh, shooting skills, and and so our first 
uh, uh, purpose is to help them be able to shoot the ball effectively and usually takes about a, a, a maybe four weeks of meeting with them once a, once a week and kind of helping them hone that. And once they kind of have it, get it, get, they're starting to get it, then we take and introduce shooting off the dribble, shooting off the catch. Uh, and, and those are things that are elements of basketball to be able. Uh, otherwise, why would we keep score? You know, uh, who, how will we know who won in that contest? And so we think that shooting is the number one skill that everybody should take and be effective. And yet, it's, that's not the case. If you take a th look at some of the greatest weaknesses of players, young players in particular, is they can't shoot the ball effectively. And yet, one of the things that I note a whole bunch is that we have a lot of European players who come to play in the NBA and they play in college as well, not probably a few of them in high schools even, or, or uh, prep schools. And one of the things that you notice in watching them is most of them can shoot the ball. If you take a look at the uh, Gasol brothers, um, they weren't very good shooters uh, when they first started. Um, but they have stayed with it, and now both of them can shoot three balls really effectively. And you take a look at the really good uh, uh, players from Europe, um, they come with ball skills ready to go. Well, and, well hold and, on, we're still talking about shooting, shooting, right? Yeah, we are. Uh, but the thing that's real important is that uh, they take and put a real preference on being able to shoot the ball effectively, and their coaches do too. All right, and so the thing that really is important here is if you can't shoot, <clears throat> Uh, and you're not very athletic, uh, and that's one of the things that we put a lot of effort or effort, uh, emphasis on here in this country uh, offensively is just athleticism. People can get to the basket, they can dunk, uh, and, and so they don't develop the skills like maybe they should. Now, that doesn't mean we don't have some great shooters, because we do. But it's all about the people that actually invest in their individual skill development. Yep. And, you know, that's that's why the example of the European players is important, because you can see, you know, take somebody like Dirk Nowitzki. That is somebody that is seven feet tall. Yep. And before he was really in the league, a lot of people didn't really give seven footers credit for being able to be able to shoot like yeah, that. You right, know, they think right. about Shaq or Wilt Chamberlain or, you know, fill in the blank person who yeah. once they step outside of like eight or nine feet, they are it's, pretty much limited. Yeah, it's all over. Um, yeah. But, you know, you have somebody like Dirk who's out there and he's hitting three pointers just like mm -hmm. any other great three point shooter. He invested in his individual skill development. He didn't let some preconceived notion of tall basketball player or whatever get get in the way and cloud yeah. his ability to do that. Yeah. And you look at a lot of those guys, and that's kind of the case. Same thing with like somebody like Anthony Davis, yeah. or um, you know, who are some other big tall guys that are that are able to hit? Uh, well, um, the, the Gasol brothers can shoot Gasol's the ball yeah. really well. Uh, and you know, who is the big kid that plays for? Uh, uh, the Knicks. I think it's the Knicks. Oh, Kristaps Porzingis. I mean, yes. yeah, that's another one. Okay. Um, yeah, so I mean, when we're talking about shooting the ball, we're talking not just about going to the gym or going to the park and shooting, you know, trick shots or shooting uh, casually. That's what we always talk about. You can't go into any of this skill development stuff, expect to get anything out of it if you're just going and just casually shooting around. And that means, you know, just like, Oh, I'm going to shoot one here. I'm going to go over here and shoot one. I'm going to do a, you know, hook shot over my back and, you know, that kind of stuff. That's like casual shoot around. That's fine if you're, if you just want to spend that time for, you know, whatever, but that is not going to be an investment in your skill development. Yes. You know, I, I asked a student this morning, uh, I said, you know, uh, how much do you practice your shooting? Well, I practice it uh, quite a bit. Where do you practice it? Well, I go to such and such court and, and I play games there. And I said, well, in those games, if you play for an hour, how many shots do you think you get in an hour playing in a pickup game? Uh, and he said, I don't know. And I said, well, I would be putting my money on 10 or 15 shots. And you've been working here for now 20 minutes and you've already taken 40 shots. And so what do you think that the difference is between those? If you just go play, there's no emphasis on uh, correct uh, mechanics, getting the ball to do what you want it to do. But as soon as you start breaking it down and spending time on just that element, you'll find the shooting starts to improve big time. And, yeah, and hold on, hold on. You know, we have the three pillars of practice, and there's a reason why we have structured it yeah. with the three pillars. And that's because we want to address – all of the different aspects necessary to advance your skill development. So, 
and we'll just do this real quick rundown sure. because it'll apply to everything that we talk about yeah. in the next you know couple of 10 minutes yeah but the first pillar is dialing in refining your mechanics yep. and that means slowing everything down breaking it all down and starting from the very foundation and starting to build that up and you know when we're talking about shooting that's usually going to be the form shooting drill right and you're taking everything as slow as you can and you only start maybe picking up the pace a little bit on that as you master each step yeah true and so it's really about just dialing in you're taking video ta or you know you're videoing yourself shooting looking at it does that look right uh you're working on getting the feel and the muscle memory you're taking a whole bunch of the same shots over and over and over again um you're not stepping back and and creating that new range until you've mastered the range where you're working at right in the moment exactly um, so it's a progression back the second pillar is game speed, game intensity work. So you take all of that effort that you put in the first pillar where you were trying to dial and refine, and now you're putting it into trying to get it up to the speed and pace of a game. And you can add in the defense if you want, or you can visualize the defense, but you're doing it at the pace and speed of the game. You're coming off the, the dribble, going up into the shot. You're uh, catching off the pass and going up into the shot. Um, you're, you're, you know, you're just trying to create the feel of being in a game. But the third pillar is your actual game experience. So that means, you know, you're, you're playing in any kind of game you possibly can, whether that's a pickup game or a traveling team game, a high school game, middle school game, whatever it is. But you are applying all the stuff from the first two pillars to actual game experience. Yeah. So if you're only doing one of those pillars, you're not going to be reaching your full skill development potential. Yeah. Yeah. Because like you were saying, if you're just working in the third pillar, which is game experience, yeah. You don't get the repetitions. You don't of, get. You don't get the correct repetitions. Yeah, you don't. Yeah. You don't get. You don't even. You don't get to be, to refine and really get everything dialed yeah. in, dialed in. And then you don't get the repetitions that you need off the game speed, yeah. game intensity. And you know, sure, you get to play, but that doesn't really help you as much as you it, you think it should. Yeah. So you have to have all three pillars to really advance yourself in developing your skills. Yeah. Okay. So that that was okay. Let's that, let's that's cap, good with that. Cap yeah. number one. All right. So what is the second one? Okay, we're going to take just a time out here to say hi to Tanner, uh, Tanner Jones. He's one of our local guys. Hi, Tanner. Um, hope you're still with us. Um, and if you have anything you want to add, be sure to jump in. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So what is our second one? All right. Second one has to do with ball skills or ball handling. You know that probably is the weakest skill that most players possess. They think they're pretty good because they can go behind the back once in a while and they go through the legs uh, once in a while and it's okay. But what, the important thing about ball handling skills is this, is those are a medium for you to move from one place of the court to the other and do it really quick. If you take a look at this, the, uh, um, um, the, uh, uh, the game as it was invented in 1895, I think it was 18, 1891. 1891, there was no mention of dribbling. It was a passing game only. And then what happened is that after a while, players began to, uh, as I read the story, players began to then uh, get in, involved in dribbling the basketball a couple of times, and then they pass. And so all of a sudden, movement in basketball started to really uh, improve uh, to where it is today, which it's mostly a movement game in the, in the modern game today, okay? And so ball handling skills are really important. And some of the elements that are missed in, in ball skill development is this, is that we need to be able to dribble a basketball and dribble it hard. Um, dribbling it hard means that we hit that floor with the ball really, really solid. And the reason for that is that we want it to come back to our hands quickly and we want it to stick in our hands when it's coming up hard. That allows us to be able to manipulate the basketball in a number of different ways to benefit what we're trying to get done. Whether it's a cross dribble, a scissor dribble, a flat back dribble, whatever it is in the way of, of ball control. And we want to work on both hands. Now, one of the things that we found about uh, uh, the uh, ball handling is that uh, most players don't want to work on their weak hand. And the reason for that is they don't want to be embarrassed. Okay? Or it's and, uncomfortable uh, or It's whatever. uncomfortable. And so what they do is they work on their, their strong hand, and then they run into that person who's pretty foxy on defense, and they know you have that <coughs> left hand, and so they make you play with the left hand the whole yeah. game. 
And so what that does is that kind of limits your ability to attack the basket, to move the basket around the floor, uh, the basketball around the floor. And so what we want to do is make sure that your weak hand uh, is equal to your strong hand. And this is something we've discussed a number of times before too, and that is um, most people don't like to take and work on their ball skills because there's no immediate reward. When we're shooting around, putting the ball in the hoop, that's a reward, and we get a little smile on our face. Oh, that felt really good, okay? Uh, but when we're using, uh, working our ball skills, we don't have that immediate gratification of getting something done that's kind of exciting. And yet, when you get into a, a game situation and you're able to break the defender down with your ball skills and get to the basket or get to a good spot on the floor where you can get a shot off and you make it, Hey, that's how you got there to get that basket is because of your good ball skills. And here's, Go here's another thing, too, is that a lot of people, young players, they focus on being able to do these these attacks or dribble yeah. skills. We won't even call them attacks. Dribble skills, like between the legs, behind the back, blah, 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 fill in the blank. And it's great for their potential and one mixtape that they may put together or a highlight film or whatever. But the problem is is that they are not working on executing attacks yeah. and so yeah you can dribble between the legs but can you do that at speed and actually have it be effective on getting by somebody yeah. uh, it doesn't matter you can go between your legs 500 times if you're just standing in one space in one place it, it doesn't matter that doesn't do anything but can mm -hmm. you use it to get to the basket yeah. or to create uh, a recovery scenario for your defender yeah. um, and the same thing is true with any kind of uh, you know we do the flat back which is the behind the back dribble we do the scissor spin the legs spin dribble all these things you need to be able to execute at speed in an attack yeah so if you don't know what that means go look at our dribble attacks videos and you can see they are not just uh, you know something you do in isolation mm -hmm. at, at the top of the key exactly as your first step you're using it in your attack. Yeah. So that's an important part. Okay. And, and it needs to be effective. One of the things that we kind of <clears throat> see a lot of is, is what we call the dribble dance. And the dribble dance is where we get two or three through the legs behind the back and we don't move out of a circle that's five feet in diameter. And so it all is just kind of showtime. And, uh, you know, I know and one and that kind of stuff is is something that people really like, and that's not something that we do that, a lot well, that's with. A, but that's entertain the basketball. We're yeah, talking about competitive if, basketball. Yeah, and effective basketball. Okay, so that's the first two. Number okay. one, and we're recapping because somebody was asking uh, if we could recap. Let's see. Yeah, Zach is asking, can you repeat number one? Okay, so the first one is shooting. Yep. The second one is ball handling. Right. So, again, we want to ask our question of you guys. What are your four essential tips yeah. before we get to the end of ours? Yeah. Leave those in the comments because we want to know. We had a few people send theirs in. Let's look at those real quick. Uh, we had Nays who said shooting, passing, dribbling, and running. Uh, Philip Cohen says number one, defense. Right. Ali says number one, teamwork, communication, two, passing, three, dribbling, four, shooting, and that includes layups, jump shots, etc. Um, cool, yeah. So there's some other ones in there too, but keep sending in what you guys think are the best uh, four essential tips for being a good basketball player. Yeah. Um, okay, so now our number three is what? Our number three is defense. Uh, and one of the things that is so important for us to be able to do uh, defensive-wise is, whether it's man or zone, doesn't make any difference, is be able to take your man, man up, whoever happens, if it's a zone, whoever happens to be in your area and they've got the basketball, you've got to be able to get up to them and play hard against them. And, and defense always comes down to footwork before anything else. That's what I was going to say. It's how do we move our feet? And um, if you watch some of our, our videos on uh, um, uh, defense, you'll find that we have certain ways that we want to move our feet to be able to help us get there. One of them is one that we call, um, oh gosh. Step drag? Step and drag. Uh, oftentimes what happens when we're playing defense and the, the, the offensive person is moving, we slide our feet together and they almost touch. And what happens is that when that happens, we begin to get taller and then we're back down again. And so that up and down, up and down kind of uh, uh, defensive footwork is not going to work in your favor. What we want to do is we want to point the toe in the direction that we're going to go, and then we step in that direction with a nice long step, and then we bring the other, we drag the other one in, but they never get very close together. And okay? I will say this too about the step drag thing. If you need a visualization on 
one of the reasons why that is so important. Consider this. Consider your center of gravity, and that's kind of where your center of mass is. You know, uh, if you are moving that around, that's going to be hard to keep your balance and stabil right. stability. So your center of gravity, it's typically going to be, you know, somewhere like in here on uh, on a person. So if I'm here and I'm taking steps where my feet are coming together and I'm stepping wide and coming together and they're coming close, you can see my center of gravity goes up and down. That's not very stable. Yeah. But if I stay down and I do my step drag, it stays in the same plane. So that means my stability is always going to be pretty much set because my right. center of gravity is all in one plane. Right. That's just one, one good visualization of why that's important. Right. One other element that we like to teach people, too, and is that... Hold on, too. Go ahead. And you're able to change directions yeah. quicker. <laughs> you're able to react if you need to react. Yeah. Um, if, you're, if you get caught where you're, you're standing straight up when you're doing this, the, the improper footwork, yeah. that's right when you get crossed over. That's right when people get their ankles broken and fall on the ground and you yeah. end up in some sad fail video. <laughs> so you don't want to do that. You really do want to make sure that you are preparing yourself to be able to adjust at every moment that you're on the court. Okay. Uh, and one of the other things that's important to that is about foot movement is this, is that we want to be able to understand if the defense does get an edge on us that we've got to be ready to turn <clears throat> and run. Uh, we don't you mean want the to, offense. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm talking about, yeah, we're talking about the defense turning and running. And turning and running means that you can actually move quicker if you're in a sprint <clears throat> than you are in, in step, drag, step, drag. Okay, so that's real important. And, and here's another thing, too, about defense. And, you know, we say this very frequently, and it's true with offense as well, but you never want to be a reactionary defender. Yeah. You want to be the one that is in control. You want to be an in-control okay. defender. So that means that you are beating them to the spot. You're making it impossible for them to even catch the ball. If they have the mm -hmm. ball, you are making life hard for them. Yeah. You're forcing them to do things that you are making them do, yeah. not the other way around. Because yeah. if you are the one that's reacting to them, you're already a step behind. And so that makes you kind of at the disadvantage. Take yourself into the advantage. Yeah. Well, and one other thing, and then we'll let this one go on while we go to the last one, that is that we want to take and come up to our defensive position and with our feet squared up. Uh, and it, this, this probably would help a lot. We like to have both feet like on the three-point uh, three shot arc so that they are always uh, kind of in an even position. Years ago, when I was a younger coach, you would come <coughs> up to the offensive player and you would have the foot that is nearest the middle of the floor forward, and the other was in a, uh, a, 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 a back position. So they were staggered a little bit. But then what we found out is that over time, coaches get smarter and they started to uh, attack the uh, uh, foot that was higher. And when they attack the foot that is higher, what happens then is that you swing your, your leg back and your hips to rotate into the opposite position. Uh, uh, and what happens is people were going by you. And so- It takes 20 minutes to do, and so it's- Yeah, and so what happens is that and this has evolved probably over the last two or three decades, and that is the fact that we're in a more squared up position. And that means when we come up to somebody, we don't have a foot forward that they can attack. We have both feet up, and yeah. we, can, we are going to work to stay in front of them as they move around the arc. Yeah, and, and you know that, that one foot forward thing, that was kind of, it, it was probably developed out of the fact that most players only had one very developed ball handling hand, right? And, you know, you're also trying to corral people and keep them off of that strong hand. But these days, players are kind of more apt to develop handles on both sides. Yeah. And, you know, again, you're told, you know, attack that top leg. Go over the top of that top leg. Once you do that, that, that defender is in major trouble. So you don't yeah. want to be that defender. Again, that's another one where you end up on the, you know, the, the, the fail mixtape because... Yeah you really get your feet caught up at that yeah. point because you're trying to catch up and you can't make your feet move fast enough. Right. Okay. So okay. Let's, uh, let's do a quick one on okay. number four. So what okay. is number four? Number four for us is rebounding. One of the things so important in the game of basketball is ball possessions. 
uh, because ball possessions then turn over into potential points made. And if we can go up and get a rebound and keep the other team from getting, let's say that it's an, we go up and get a defensive rebound, that means the other team did not get an offensive rebound, which they can maybe put right back in there again. And so we want to have really good rebounding, which requires good footwork. It also requires uh, being able to get that person behind you, block them out, and not let them work their way around you to get in and, and take the ball. Because uh, ball possession is one of the key ingredients to winning in basketball, ball possessions, ball possessions. And you might find that uh, uh, some teams maybe are better at rebounding and they get 10 more rebounds than the other team that are 10 more opportunities then for them to score and 10 less for the other team. And so rebounding is really important in the game of basketball. Yeah, I mean, there's, it really is one of the best ways to get an extra possession yeah. is rebounding. Yeah. And, you know, the other thing that it's great about is offensively, you're right there by the basket typically. And so you can you can wind up with a wide open shot if you are effectively rebounding the basketball. Yeah. And there is a technique to it, yeah. you know, whether that's, you know, locating your guy, boxing out or blocking out, uh, getting the rebound and then going up for your for the putback. I mean, that's super important to figure all that out. Yeah. Um, but the possession thing cannot be overstated on the defensive end. A defensive rebound takes the ball away from the offensive team. Yep. They don't get a second chance. On the on the other end, when you're on offense, it is a second chance for you. Yep. And so, obviously, two possessions is better than one because you have another opportunity. Yeah. So yeah. think of it like that and put a huge emphasis on rebounding. It doesn't matter yeah. if you're the five foot one guy or the seven foot one guy or girl. Uh, you need to ha have that in your back pocket. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Yep. So those are our four things that we think are most important in the game. Yeah, those are the four things. And Obviously, they don't necessarily have to be ranked one, two, three, four, uh, but probably we'll find people who have their rankings too. Well, shooting is going to be our number one no yeah. matter what. Yep. Um, but here's the thing. Those are four essentials that we have, but those are not the only thing that you should focus on. As a basketball player, you want to be as versatile and um, able as possible yeah. because that makes you the kind of Swiss Army knife of the team. <laughs> you can go in and you can do a little bit of everything. You will be the one that gets the playing time over the over somebody that doesn't have those yeah. abilities. Uh, you will find a place on a team, whereas people that are specialists don't always find a place on the yeah. team. And you will be able to kind of evolve as you get higher and higher in the different levels of basketball that you play. Exactly. So, be a versatile all-around player is, is our huge take home. And be right? sure you can shoot it. Okay, right. let's let's look at a couple people's things right. here that because Zach Shaw says court vision. You can't play when you don't all you look is down at the floor and not know where your team basket is. That's true. Yeah, that's very true. Defense, darn it, you already took it. Yeah, sorry. Uh, diet, the food we put in our bodies during the day affects how we play. That's an yep. indirect thing, yep. sure. Mm -hmm. Practice discipline. If you practice lazy, you play lazy. That's a great one. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Buy that one. Um Alf, Alf Funkhauser says, uh, defense, rebounding, passing, and shooting. Uh, let's see here. Do we have any more? Uh, okay, if you guys have any more, let us know what your four essential basketball skills are. We would love to. Maybe we can do some more at the end. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to shut that talk down. If you guys have more questions about it, let us know. But we are going to jump into answering your guys' questions on anything basketball related. So keep sending those in, and we're going to go back, and we're going to look through some of the ones that we have already. And we're going to answer as many as we can today. So get them in early if you want them answered. Uh, one other thing I will say is that you guys have a question that you need to answer for us, right? right. So what is our, our question of the day? This is our question every time we meet, but what is it? Where are you located in the world? Yeah, where are you guys from? Yeah. We are in Santa Cruz, California. But we want to know, are you somewhere else in the world? Yeah. Are you in uh, Afghanistan? Are you in... Lithuania. Lithuania. Okay. Are you in uh, Romania? Are you in South Africa? We, we want to know where you guys are from in the world. Because that makes us super excited to know that Team Shot Science is, is all over the place. Yeah. So please let us know. Um, also, check out all of our social media stuff, Shot Science on all of those. And check out ShotScience.com. Okay. Let's get into some of these questions here. Boy, there's a lot of them today. That's great. Okay. Um, this one is from Kanal who says, how can I increase my speed with the ball to blow by defenders? You know, um, actually working on developing more explosiveness, uh, and you could do that by going to our, our vertical jump videos and 
because not only does it improve your vertical, it also it improves your explosiveness uh, off from a starting uh, starting from a start. Let's a, put it that yeah, way. Yeah, from a set. Okay, and the thing that's real important there is that you can become more effective as uh, uh, attacking the offense or attacking the defender if you work on really good footwork. One of the things that happens, and I, I watch all levels of basketball, and I see some of the most incredibly inept kind of footwork that people are using trying to get by uh, defenders. If you have really effective footwork, and if you look at our videos, we, pull it, we put it pretty much into perspective, we think, to help you get better in doing that. And so footwork is so key in every sport where we run, okay? If it's soccer, just imagine the footwork that's involved with people who play the game of soccer or football or baseball, and you could go on and on and on forever about that. Well, to go slow, you ha or to go fast, you have to go slow first. So yeah. you got to start out real slow, work on the footwork. The footwork. Um, work on stuff like the jab step and really getting that to be as quick as possible. Then work on things like the long one and one. Yeah. If you go to our video on that, we show you how that long step and that long dribble, that can kind of uh, supersede a little bit of lack of athleticism yeah. if you don't have that. Yeah. Um, but getting things like that going um, and definitely working on foot speed and, and lateral maneuverability yeah. um, and just general athleticism in using stuff like our vertical jump videos and the vertical jump handbook. And you can go to shotscience.com and get the all access pass and you can see some of our athletic training there too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so those are kind of the ways that we would approach that. Okay, we got Kanal, who's from India. We have uh, Mr. Camera 8, who's from Sweden. Right. Bill, Bill Wurtenen, who's from Massachusetts. J.J. Bryant from uh, Tornado, or is that Toronto? Um, Le Leah Sake is from, says defense. Right. You're not from defense, but you're saying defense. Yeah, okay. for sure. Um, Chris Deacon or Ivanov says is from Bulgaria. J.J. Right. Bryant, Toronto, thought All so. Right. Um, Let's see. Uh, Noam is from Israel. Yas Ben is from Morocco. Cool. Keep sending those in where you guys are from. We really, uh, really. Oh, here's Zach who says originally from Illinois, but currently residing in Pakistan. Right. That's cool. All right. Um, okay. This one is from Julius Dorak who says, "Hey guys, I'm watching you from Germany. Could All you right. talk some talk about some drills a small forward can slash should do, and can you talk about how to read an offensive player as a defender in a one on one situation?" Okay. Uh, could you talk about uh, hello to Germany by the way? Yeah, right. Um, could you talk about some drills? A small forward can slash should you, okay. Okay. Um, should we just well, well <laughs> here here's the deal. Um, if you take and go to our YouTube channel, you will find all kinds of drills that are used for attacking the defender, and it doesn't make any difference if you're a a, a, a wing a point. Um, you know, everybody attacks the basket pretty much the same way. And it, they will, those videos will explain to you about how we teach people to attack. We like the one-on-one -on -one, uh, uh, dribble attack. Anytime we go at somebody, we want, we want to take a long step. We want to take a long dribble. And if we get into that really quick and we get a good angle where we're coming right off their hip, what's going to happen is typically they're going to be faced with uh, a collision, which will be their responsibility, or they have to take and open up their hips, which allows us to just take and blow right on by them. So go look that up. But we have a whole bunch of other uh, dribble attacks well, that you can use that will help you. Okay. Well, here's the thing: is that you're worried about drills a small four can do. Yeah. Here's a here's what what is something that we are not big fans of is anybody assigning positions to themselves when it comes to skill development. It yeah. is a mistake. Small forwards, power forwards, centers, point guards, fill in the blank. Everybody needs to be able to do everything. They need to be basketball players first. There is nothing, <clears throat> there's no benefit to specializing in any of this stuff. Yeah. If you specialize as a point guard or the classic point guard, that is not a good approach because you will get into a situation where you will get seated or you know benched in, in trade of somebody else that can do all these other things. Yeah. So as a small forward, I would say scrub that from your uh, vocabulary. And I would just work on developing your all-around versatility. You should be able to shoot, pass, dribble, defend, go in the post, play on the perimeter, uh, shoot free throws, rebound, play defense on f both ends, you know, full extension of the court, um, everything, be a leader, blah, 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 fill it in. You should be able to do all of those things because if you can't, you're going to be limiting yourself. 
Well, and there if might, you can, you there, can play anywhere. Yeah, there might be <clears throat> two or three other people who maybe are a little better than you are at that particular position, and maybe your body and skills and everything lends itself to maybe a three guard or a two guard or even a point guard. Uh, and so if you're able to be, first of all, a basketball player with many skills, uh, then that that's going to open some doors for you. So when it comes to drills, do every drill that you can find yeah. that is going to help you in your skill development. So go to our channel. We have tons of drills, yeah. but don't focus on being a small forward or any position. Yeah. Focus on being developing all around. Yeah. And then you say, and can you talk about how to read an offensive player as a defender one-on-one -on -one situation? We always say you want to have that very soft focus on kind of their mid-low tor torso yeah. because their body can't go anywhere without that spot. Yeah. Uh, if you focus on things like their eyes or their head or their feet or their where Hands. the ball is, that's that's a great way to kind of get fooled. Well, just take for example, if somebody has got a really good shot fake and all they're going to do is give you this and you bite, uh, you're done. You're done. So you need to be a responsive to the whole picture. And like Casey's talking about, we talk in terms of a hard focus and a soft focus, a lot of parts of basketball, but it really comes through here when you're defending somebody one-on-one -on -one. beat them to the spot yeah. don't let them get the ball um and just make life difficult for them yeah. i mean that's really yeah. the, the best approach yeah uh oh we got vel velco bodybuilding who says salute from serbia awesome oh, yep yeah. uh we got king swag who's from melbourne right. australia we have david or dave sorn who's from the philippines kevin die who's from memphis All right Cool. Awesome to see you guys here. Okay, this is from Mr. Camera 8. He says, Shot science. I've been struggling with my shot for a few days, two weeks straight every day. Now I am usually a really good shooter, but now for some reason I am struggling. Can you give me any tips, please? Um, well, two weeks. Okay, this is one of the problems yeah. that a lot of people have is yeah. that their sample size is so small or short. Yeah. So you are going to have ups and downs in your shooting. It's always going to be peaks and valleys, yeah. but you should look at it over time over a long period of time. There's gonna be times where you're gonna be at the height of your, you know, you're peaking, and you're gonna be down low where you're just like, I cannot make anything go in. Yeah. The problem arises when you focus so hard on the fact that you're not making anything or you feel like you're in a slump or whatever. The best thing you can do is just pull back, and if it's a mechanical issue where you're having problems with your stroke, then you need to address that and do something like the form shooting drill and kind of get back, make sure you dial that in, fix that, and then get back to the second pillar, the game speed, game intensity, and then you'll be kind of working towards getting that all ironed out. Yep. If you focus on the fact that you're shooting poorly, then you're probably gonna continue to shoot poorly if you take that in the negative kind of direction. If you use it as a motivator, it will help you get back on track. Yeah, you know, probably <clears throat> the most important element for you to take and really real, uh, uh, work on is this, is that you need to have really good shooting mechanics. And if you don't know what those are, you can certainly go to our uh, channel and look at our videos and we explain exactly what we think is the important part of your strokes because you can practice until the cows come home uh, and be doing things that are not very productive for your shot and your shot never really improves. Yeah. And, and uh, you gotta so, have a plan. Yeah, you gotta have a plan and okay, I really buy what those guys are selling. Okay, and it doesn't necessarily have to be us, but we think we do a great job of that. But the thing is, is that once you get those mechanics working uh, and then you begin to have, and I would take videos uh, of yourself shooting, have somebody else take them from the front, back and sides. And, and as you're working on it, is that what those guys were talking about? Yeah, I think it was. Okay, and then, or you can send us a video of you shooting and we'll tell you, uh, we'll get back to you and tell you what it is that you need to work on there. But you wanna have everything being uh, effectively done uh, in a, uh, what is the words that I want to use there, in a very, um, eh. like regimented or something no, like that? No, um, we just want to make sure that it's all very, <laughs> oh gosh, I'm, I'm sorry. Organized I'm, or? Well, uh, we want it to be organized, but we also want it to be efficient is the word that I'm looking for. Some people will shoot the ball and as they shoot it, the elbow flares out and the shot is yeah. flat. All and, those extra moving parts you don't need. Yeah, and so what you need to do is just kind of dial it all in. And once you've got it all dialed in, then uh, the shot should start to take shape 
uh, for you. And then constantly view yourself with a video, have somebody else video, uh, video it for you, and, and uh, you'll find it starts to improve. And, yeah. and that's how you get to be better at shooting is just have it evaluated. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's something that you need to really focus on being diligent about and purposeful when you're doing your shooting. Okay, this one is from Bill Wertenen who says, what do you guys want in a point guard? We want a point guard that can do everything. Yeah, right. we want to be a basketball player. And you, you probably chuckle when you hear that, but uh, we want every player on the floor to be able to play point guard, uh, the two, the three, four. Uh, and and be able to do that effectively. Go even in the play post. the post. Yep. Yeah. And and so the the elements that you would really like to see your your point guard be able to do is number one, you want them to be able to organize the game. You want them to be able to uh, get people into their offense and in different offenses. You want to be able to attack your defender so you can create openings for your teammates as well. There's a whole litany of leadership things. skills. Yeah. Uh, and, I mean, but the biggest thing about any position that somebody is asking us about, what, what do we, they would say, you know, what, what do you want in a post player or yeah. what do you want in the center? Or yeah. We will say the same thing. Somebody that can do everything. Yeah. Because if we want a center that can just shoot within, you know, four feet of the basket, but they're yeah. really effective there, yeah. that's great. But what happens when they, that gets taken away? Yeah. Um, I mean, that, that, that's a real issue. So that's a, a weakness that we don't want them to have. We want to have a player that can step in and do everything. The point guard should be able to go in and post up because that also it gives you another option, but it also helps them in knowing how to deliver the ball into the post exactly or right. when a good opportunity in post arises. Yep. So we want somebody that can do everything. When it comes to a point guard, there may be a little flare-up for leadership skills yeah. <laughs> or yeah. organizational skills, but that's, that's it. When it comes to skills, they need to have everything. And one of the things that is really important for them is good ball skills. I mean, that really is important. Okay, King Swag says, how does one go about finding their specific shooting mechanics? You go to Shot Science Basketball. You start with the YouTube. fundamentals. Yeah, yeah. but that's where you find them. You go to Shot Science Basketball on YouTube and also ShotScience.com, yep. and you will find complete breakdowns of what we think is important as far as the skill <laughs> mechanics of shooting. Well, if you, if you go to Shot Science on YouTube, you'll find all of our old videos where we talk mm -hmm. about that stuff. If you go to ShotScience.com and you get the all access pass, you will see all the updated videos, the super specific breakdown, the drills you need to do, but that is really where we would direct you guys to check out our shooting methodology and how to make yourself a next level, next level shooter slash player. Um, okay, this one is from Jay Weezy underscore. He says, on my shot, I kind of grip the ball with my fingertips. I noticed from recording my shot, how should my fingertips be? Well, you don't want the ball on your fingertips. You want it on your finger pads is where you want it. Oh, keep talking. Okay, on your finger pads. And one of the things that we talk about when we're uh, telling people how we want them to grip the ball is that we want them to have be able to grip the ball with the thumb and the little finger. And you spread that thumb out, and it elevates the ball up off of the palm. And you can see right here, we call this the one finger test right here. So it's up off of the heel of the hand, and it's spread over the finger pads. And uh, this allows you to have really good control of the basketball. If you have your thumb laying kind of flat on the, on the ball, on the side, and it's sitting down on the palm, what happens is the ball is not really very stable there. And so if we get it out on the finger pads, we can pinch it with these two fingers right here, not hard, but grip the basketball, and it allows us much better control of the basketball. But you don't want it like this either. That's like a no. shot put. Yeah. You don't want that because you don't have the control again. No. But if you have it in that spot where we have the one finger test ability, you can see, oops, if I don't lose the ball, but it, it's going to be more in control that way. Yeah. Okay. So that's our thoughts on that one. Um, let's see here. What's a, what's a good updated one here? Um, this is from Julius who says, thank you for the tips, guys. Have you any tips in seeing the court? What I mean is seeing a cutting team or something like that. Oh, yeah. Okay. You, one of the things that we talk about in, in, in basketball is having good vision. And people don't understand necessarily what peripheral vision is. It is a, the periphery, um, 
if we put our hands right out of the side, mm -hmm. I, which I've got right now, I can see both of my thumbs and I'm looking straight ahead. And so what that allows me then is to see this wide scope or periphery of area in front of me. And then out of that, you can take and have a hard focus or a soft focus. If I've got a soft focus as I come up the floor, I can see the defenders, I can see my teammates, I can see the cheerleaders over on the side, I can see all of that. And as I come up the floor, if there's something that I really want to have a hard vision on, like the basket, it's easy for me to make that con uh, convert uh, to that situation with my eyes. But we want to get our eyes up the floor, and we don't need to check and see if the ball is changing colors as we're dribbling it, because it's not. We just and to tell worried, you, or worried about it going somewhere because it's round. Yeah, one of the things that we teach people and we learn how to dribble a basketball too is we use what we call the hula hoop uh, example, and the hula hoop we take and, and have them put the hula hoop around their body, and the, the the thing is right tight to your back and it will hang out in front of you, and we don't ever want the ball inside that hula hoop. It wants to be outside of it, and and so those are little tips on on those kinds of things. Yeah. Okay. Mika Malwitz says, hey, I know you from Mr. Mike. All right, Mr. Mike. <laughs> Mr. All Mike, right. I, I did a project with him with uh, Dirk Nowitzki a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Mr. Mike is, is the man. Yeah. Um, Mr. Camera 8 says, thank you. Can I DM you, DM you a video of me shooting on Instagram? You can do that. Uh, it's Sometimes it's hard because we get so many videos on Instagram about that kind of stuff. But you can try. We will try to get to that. Yeah, we'll do it. Um, yeah. You might want to try to tweet it at us or something like that. Sometimes yeah. that's better. But yeah. Uh, we try to check as many of those out as we can. Okay. Um, if you want to do like an online training or uh, a video evaluation thing, you should email us and we can try to set something up for that where you can maybe get some time with Coach Tom or something like that. Okay. Um, Justin Wright is asking, or Wirt, that's, that's a, is that a misspelling of your own name? I hope not. Uh, asks, should a point guard post up like a center? Well, yes. They should be able to do that. Um, and, you know, probably the coaches don't spend much time on, on people because they kind of, during practice, how much time do you have to take the posts or the guards to go over and, and work on post drills? So that's usually something they might cover uh, in the off season or maybe well, this, this outside is, of practice. Personally, but, you need to work on it yourself. Yeah, yeah, you do. You can't rely on your coach or your team to do anything in terms of skill development. Yeah. You have you are the only one that is really uh, invested in that. Well, probably, probably most of you have found out that when your season is on, there is not much time in a practice for coaches to work on individual skills. And it shouldn't be that way anyway. It shouldn't be, but that's the way it is. They have to work on inbound plays, oh, no, I'm press saying, offense, I'm, and all that kind of I'm stuff. I'm saying it shouldn't be a time where you are working yeah. on individual skill yeah. development. Agreed. Practice is a time for you guys to come together and figure out your game plan and really have everything dialed yeah. in. Yep. Yeah. Skill development is on you. Yeah. That's one of those things you're you're working on in the off season. You're working on during the season. But it's if you show up at your coach's, you know, at, the, at tryouts or at the practice, and you want the coach to work on your, uh, you know, ball handling ability, yeah. the Forget coach it. is going to be like, <laughs> we don't have any time for that. We got yeah. we got a plan here. So you need to work on that yourself. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. This one is from Mika, who's asking, <clears throat> how can I dribble faster? It would be great if you could help me. Okay, again, you've got to start out slow to go fast, and you need to use things like our dribbling videos, like the Dribbling 101 video, um, any of the dribbling, uh, how to develop your weak hand videos, uh, the drills associated with those videos, or you can go to shotscience.com, do the all access pass. We have a ball handling section there. And we have, uh, you know, we have our friend Sarah Takahashi, who is yeah. showing you how to do all the crazy dribbling skills that she knows how to do. So. It comes down to taking the time, spending the time, diligently planning out your practice and having it so that it progresses. Too many people want to start out, they don't know how to do anything, but then they want to be Kyrie Irving tomorrow. Yeah. So they try to do the things that he's doing. Kyrie Irving started out small and progressed his way up to where he is. Yeah. You have to do the same thing. And you think it'll never come, but it'll start to come. as it, The more you invest in it, the faster it will come yeah. back on a return, right? right? Yes, absolutely. Okay, uh, let's see here. Um, Kevin Dye saying, that flop finish question, though, read it, bros. Well, I didn't see it. Where, where was it? Um, this one is from Giannis, who says, how do I defend against bigs when I get caught in a mismatch? 
Well, number one thing, you want to keep them from catching the basketball. Yeah. Because once they catch the basketball, then they can exert pressure over you just because of their size, uh, how big they are, uh, how thick they are, and all of that kind of stuff. But if they can't put their hands on the basketball, then they're not going to be able to do anything. And so how do you do that? Well, you've got to get into a position where you're playing the passing lane. You're getting in front of them with your body. You're contesting a possible shot. And one of the things that we do is when we uh, take and contest uh, uh, or front somebody who is a big like that, we want to take and get right in front of them. And we want to have the hand closest to the basketball to be extended as far up as we can in a straight straight line because what will happen is that if you front them sometimes their players will try and lob the ball over the top and they're able to jump up and catch that and so if that hand is straight up oftentimes those uh, uh, passers will not throw the ball in for fear that it's going to be tapped away and so uh, by fronting them uh, you take and cut down on all the things they can do you might give up uh, rebound position but you know think about this if you're on the ball side uh, and they're on the ball side, and the ball is over there as well, and they shoot the basketball. What happens is that 70% of the time, the ball will go to the other side of the floor. So just because you're fronting them doesn't mean that they're going to have a real big advantage on rebounding. Uh, they might for one that kind of bounces back, but you take your, and, and just cut your losses if you can there. Well, the thing is, too, is don't focus on the fact that you are the mismatch. Yeah. Uh, so many people do that, and then they kind of you sabotage themselves yeah. a little bit. You need to focus on just stopping the ball. Yeah. And you can take advantage of the fact that that person is taller because maybe you're more agile, maybe you're you're quicker, um, and if if you're able to just make life hard on them, then you can make that mismatch go in the opposite way. Yeah. Um, but if you're focused on you know just sitting there and trembling in your boots or whatever, that doesn't help anything. Well, and there's so, another there's another technique that you can use which um, is is really effective. Uh, you might find that somebody's five or six inch taller than you, and what we call it, we, it's not our title, but this is what it's called, it's called walling up. Walling up is a technique where you take and both arms go right to the ceiling, and you belly up to the person who's got the basketball. And uh, you, you, you wanna be as close as you possibly can so that uh, they can feel the pressure. They will, and when the ball goes up, they're trying to shoot over your extended hands, and oftentimes they're not effectively able to do that. And so we teach all of our guys around the basket, if they're in there close and they catch the ball, you immediately wall up. And that means that we're, we're not going to try and jump the bat uh, and block the shot because that's too risky. What we want to do is we want to wall up and make the shot as difficult as we can just by being in their grill. Yeah, so uh, just play your defense. Yeah. Take, take away the ball or, and, and all the up. options. Wall them up. Um, this one is, uh, I just had it. Where did it go? Oh, Kevion Die. I found your question. He asks, how to practice the flop finish and what fingers to shoot off of any drill? Okay. Um, the flop finish is something that usually takes you a period of, of weeks to uh, effectively change because, uh, you know, usually we'll want to snap the wrist. Here's, here's what you don't want to do, and that's okay. the snapping. And it's just When it's really tight snap like that, that spins the ball faster. And it hurts. Yeah, and when you have a nice relaxed finish like this where you can see my fingers, watch Casey, you see them relax there. What happens is that we impart less rotation on the basketball. And there's less tension in your arm. Yeah. And the, the thing that's important about that is that when that gets to the basket, when we flop finish, usually the ball spins slower. And if you watch a lot of the really good shooters, uh, and NBA shooters, you'll find that their ball is really a slow rotation. And it's because they take and relax that wrist as they shoot it. And, and the reason is, is that uh, when it hits the basketball, there is less energy that is captured in that basketball because it's spinning. And so it exerts less and it will tend to bounce and stay around the basket, which we think is really good. If you couple that with the fact that you have a nice arc, now you have a soft ball that hits the rim and it tends to bound upward because of the arc and it stays around the basket. And you get a lot of second chances off of that bounce off the rim just because the ball is soft. Okay. And... You know, here, here's the, the other thing I will say is that if you go to our YouTube channel and you look at all the shooting videos, the flop finish video, we talk about that. Yeah. If you go watch the super slow motion video that has Rachel and me shooting 
you can see that on both of us how that follow through is and how we are just gently relaxing our wrist and there is no pointing or tension or one finger anything like that it is very relaxed so go watch that if you go to shotscience.com and look at the all access thing we have the same kind of demonstrations there with even more angles and all that stuff right. and you can see how gentle that needs to be and then <clears throat> when the ball comes off of your hand it needs to come off of these two fingers because if you have it come off of one finger you can see that there's no real control there you add in a second point of contact and it's going to be much more stable so when the ball comes off it's not going to be a millimeter off because a millimeter here is going to be a whole bunch more when it gets to the rim. Yeah. So you want to have it come off of these two fingers because that's going to lend the accuracy when you are letting the ball out of your hand. So if you need more info on that, you can go to our videos here, but you can also go to shotscience.com. Uh, John Yong is asking, what's the best way to shoot a ball? Go to those places I just said because that's, uh, you know, that's our methodology and we make sure that we have chosen the most efficient kind of uh, approach possible that you know you have been you know developing and working through for half, half a century, <laughs> um, and you know it's 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 a really effective approach. So we are not going to teach you things that we think are not going to help you or are going to be just marketing or inefficient or whatever. Or Every, so pl or so called revolutionary. Yeah. It's, There's not very much revolutionary in shooting the basketball these days at all. Unless you're shooting it with your feet, it's yeah. it's not revolutionary. Yeah. I mean it's everything has been really refined over the last century of shooting a basketball. So we think our approach is the best. Uh, we would love you to check it out because we like to provide a lot of reasons why and show you why and present the logic to you. And if it's not your your cup of tea, that's cool. Yeah. But we did our best. Yeah. <laughs> OK. Um, OK. Lightning round real quick because we got to get out of here. But um, oh, Mathis Bain is from Belgium. What's going All on? All right. All right. Uh, Giannis is asking if I call for too many ISOs, am I a ball hog? Probably. Uh, you kind of want to get your team involved. Basketball is a team sport. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Uh, Meek is asking, when is the next live stream? They typically are Sundays at 1 p.m. Pacific time. So if you can be around, that'd be awesome. Um, Zach Shaw is asking, would you recommend practicing ball handling with a plastic bag around the ball? No. No, I mean, no, no. there's so much. Hold on a second. You don't play the game that way. Yeah. You want a raw ball <laughs> that you can make it do what you want it to do. You know, some people recommend you wear gloves. Some people have all these different little hokey things that they try to get you to do. In my opinion, I would take and just work with the basketball that you're going to be using in a basketball game. And because you want to feel the basketball, you want to make it do what you want it to do. And by having a, a bag over it, I mean, what does that simulate? Okay, it just it, it just makes it more difficult, muddled, and you're probably not going to make very much improvement. Well, the, personal uh, point of view. The, the thing is, is that you are building in something that you need to uh, revert against once you actually get out and have to play. And sure, putting a bag on it makes it more difficult, but you should be focusing on executing with the tool that you're going to exactly. have. Exactly. Um, and, you know, that's like people saying, oh, should I shoot this ball that weighs five pounds yeah. or more than a regular basketball? It's like, no, because that's going to mess with your mechanics. Yeah. Um, and, you know, when we talk to people and work with people, I mean, you know, we know the professor and, and some of these elite level players. None of them are doing any of that stuff. Yeah. Just so you guys know. None of them are practicing with black plastic bags on or gloves. I, I think I heard that Kyrie Irving did that sometimes, but that's I mean that's one person. A lot of times people do that stuff so that they can uh, you know freshen up or have like a better uh, you know time doing something. It's yeah. something different to do. But most of those guys are not doing any of that stuff. They are taking one basketball. They are working on developing their skills, and they don't need to do this gimmicky stuff. Yeah. Uh, if that's something that you find helps you, I know some people do the tennis ball yeah. thing or whatever, and that, hey, if that if that really helps you, but we have a feeling that the best approach is to use the tool and to use it in a way that that helps you develop your skills. Exactly right. Um, so that is, there's no magic pill, and if people are selling a plastic bag or gloves or whatever as the as the magic pill, you should not believe a word they say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, basketball Edits is asking how to acquire the killer instinct and confidence on the court. 
that all comes from confidence in your skills. Exactly. So you confidence have, in yourself. Confidence yeah. in your in 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 your skills that leads to confidence in, in the execution of those skills, right. which will give you confidence on the court. So right. you have to work to get to that point. Um, well, there, Justin, where to write is asking, how do you get better at shooting off the dribble? Should I try to break down my man or do a crossover or a move to get us to a spot and shoot it? You have to learn how to create space yes. to take a good shot. Yes. Good shots are, you can go watch our video on what's a good shot but you have to learn how to create that space. And there's a ton of offensive moves that you can use. Yes. So I would say go check those out. Yes. Um, look, okay. You see Ron Port there? Yes. Okay. Ron Port asks, should you look at the ball or rim when shooting? That's a great question. And, you know, um, the thing that we think important is this. And since I was a young guy, um, coaches would tell me, <coughs> uh, take and focus on the back rim. Or they would say focus on the front rim. And some who I feel didn't know anything about it will tell you to focus on the backboard. The only time we would focus on the backboard if we were shooting a shot from the side, a bank shot, okay? What we teach everybody is this. We're trying to put the ball right in the middle of that basket. And so we call that the nest. And that's where our eyes are focused. They're focused right on the nest, right in the middle of that thing. That's where we want to put the basketball. Yeah, it's, there has been like this thing where people say that you should watch the ball when you shoot it yeah. or whatever. That is a poor approach to acquiring a target and hitting the target with whatever you're delivering to it. If you look at any of you know you know shooting a gun, we're not looking at the bullet coming out of the of the of the uh, of the muzzle. I you're like not, your your darts analysis. I think that's really good. Or if you're throwing a dart at a dartboard, you're not watching the dart as you throw it. You have to focus in on that spot where you're trying to put it. When you're throwing a football, you're not looking at the ball as you're doing it. You're focusing on your receiver. When you are, you know, doing, you know, doing any of these things, you're not looking at the ball. Yeah. You know, the exception might be golf, but the thing about golf is that you know where the target is. You know where the ball is. You have to focus on hitting the ball so that it goes to where the target is. Well, and, and you look at that analogy, and the, and the, the, the uh, basket is the same as that, that golf ball. It is the yeah. target. Yeah, and, that's, that's the thing. Is that, you know, yeah. We heard that people were trying to use the golf analogy for that, but that's yeah. not it. You're, you're taking it, you're, you're complicating it more than what it is. Yeah. You hitting the, hitting the ball with the club is hitting the ball. Yeah not hitting the ball into the hole. You know, if it's, it's imagine if you watch the, the head of the club try to hit the ball. Good luck with that. Yeah. Um, so you focus on your target, and you have to focus on that when you're trying to deliver the ball. Yeah. All the stuff about putting the ball and, and watching and making sure all that stuff is, you should have already done that. That should have been done during the form shooting and all that. That should all be sorted out. Yeah. Um, okay, so that's going to do it for us today, you guys. We have one question for you, though. Or no, we'll, we'll do the two questions. One question is, where in the world are you guys from? We have Basketball Edits, who's from, from Greece. All right. Um, All right. And that's awesome. We want to know where you guys are from in the world. Japan. Are you from uh, Ethiopia? Are you from Missouri? We want to know where you guys are from. So let us know. And please go out and tell your friends and family to check out Shot Science because that helps us grow the team. Our second question is this. What are your four essential basketball skills? And we know that we like versatile players, but we want to know what your four essentials are. Yeah. So please let us know. And uh, make sure you check us out on all things Shot Science. We are on Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, Twitter, you, you name it. We're Shot Science. Mm -hmm. Go check out ShotScience.com, and you can join the all-access membership. We will give you a promo code. If you go and do one free month exclamation point, all of that is in all caps, all caps, one free month exclamation point at checkout you will get a free month of the shot science all access membership so go check that out you can get a shot science shirt or shot science gear and uh, you can get that in the store and if you guys wear that stuff and send us pictures on on any of the social media or video hashtag team shot science we check all that out we might feature you on one of our pages so yep. please go check that stuff out uh, thank you guys so much, and we will see you next time. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. Oh, if we didn't get to your question, it's not because we didn't like you. It was because we ran out of time. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> bye. <laughs>